Hi guys, it's Jilly Hunt here with my A to Z guide to stamping up products. And as you can see, I'm on the letter X for extreme cutting and embossing. And I did do my first session on this um, last week and I showed you the new Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine, which I have to say I have now used quite a lot more than I had even last week and I am so impressed with it. Um, I am absolutely raving and I don't, those of you that know me know I'm quite mad and quite raving in lots of other ways but I don't often sing and sing and sing about a product until I've really tested it to destruction and I haven't tested this to destruction but I have tested it enough now to know that this is a stunning machine. However there are a couple of problems with it which are not a problem I promise you they're not a problem but you might need a workaround if you've got other dies or other uh, embossing folders now I'm going to address that right at the very end of this video because I don't want to bore those of you that are just buying it new and buying our own cut and emboss um, folders because that's fine they all work to perfection so if like me you're an old girl or an old boy and you've got lots of older embossing folders then stick around right at the very end and I'll give you some workarounds okay so here we go and we're going to look specifically at the embossing ideas I'm not going to use the machine loads because you've seen the machine working if you haven't then go back to my last week's where it was just x all by itself no part one part two little labels just the one with the x on um go find that that will tell you how to use the machine i'm giving you ideas now for using it with embossing okay so here we go first off oops um, I want to just bring in two that I showed on the previous uh, video um, just to remind you the simplest thing you can do with an embossing folder is a subtle background. Now you may not even notice the background on some of these but the very fact that you don't means it's a professional lovely finish. So let me bring this right up for you. Notice there's just a lovely linen effect in the background here and that linen effect is created using the embossing folder it's not a linen paper so you can choose any of our cardstock any of our papers including any designer papers with a pattern already on it if you just want that to also have a texture that's where you're going to use your embossing folder and then you can always do something a little bit of fun and you can just bring in I've done a cut out here but instead of it cutting out to the base layer I've slipped another piece underneath with a different embossed surface so that's a bit of fun too so you can play with texture um here we go I've just got the background which is just a text it just gives the surface an in interesting finish to set that rose against. I didn't want lots of fussy fancy bows and ribbons and things because I just enjoyed the colouring on that. I've used our blender pens and aren't they beautiful? Look at that. Not the, not our blender pens, the stamping blends. I always call them the blender pens, I'm sorry. They're called <laughs> the stamping blends. But aren't, isn't that beautiful? And I just enjoyed colouring it and I thought I don't really want it on anything fussy. So there you go, just a little bit of interesting texture in the background, stops it looking stark and, and desperate. Okay, so that's the first thing you can do with an embossing. You can vary your backgrounds. Um, then you can look at your different embossing folders. And you can create just ordinary backgrounds. So this is a little dotty one and it was used to create a little box which I have to give credit to Tina's creative box um, so this was Bettina who created this lovely little box um, but that same dottiness when it's used with balloons and in a kind of party mode just looks like a dotty fun background 
maybe it almost looks like confetti in the background I don't know but once you start putting it with an appropriate image so here we've got our deer and we've just got a piece of torn paper which sort of looks like a piece of snow and suddenly we've got falling snow behind the reindeer so look out for the patterns that could become pictorial so that's the second thing I'd suggest to you when you're looking and choosing your embossing folders think about will it create a picture will, as well as just a design because that's a great thing to try uh, now I want to just show you a couple in fact I'm sorry these are older um, this is an older snowflake design but I just happen to have them as samples so why reinvent the wheel when you've already got one so um i just want to show you what kind of papers that you can emboss on so you can emboss on a piece of vellum and what you get with vellum is as it presses the whiteness of the vellum pops through almost as if it's etched isn't that brilliant makes a fabulous design. Um, what about window sheet? Fabulous for making um, little boxes with see-through fronts but where you don't want it just to be a plain window you want to actually have some um, texture to it but also great look at this this I've just got on a little piece of silver thread oh I can't <laughs> I can't show it you because if I do it if I do it that way up you can't see a thing um but these I've made into lovely little hanging decorations I've just put a few little tiny um little gems rhinestone gems and that will give me a really nice sort of glitter in the lights on the Christmas tree so little tiny decorations really pretty um, what about creating your own metallic effects? This really does look like metal, looks like metal cutwork, and that's just using a piece of foil paper. So if you want to create some really lovely metal effects, can you imagine that at Christmas? I'm going to use this at Christmas. In fact, I should have made you one just to show you. Sorry, I just ran out of time. But I'm going to just make some little cylinders and punch out some little holes and pop some now can't put a candle in because of course it would set fire to the paper but I can put a little um, battery operated one in and it would look lovely sitting on a windowsill so that's that's one of my little projects for this Christmas maybe somebody will beat me to it if you do then put a comment underneath and and maybe if you can insert us a photo so we can see it that would be great um here's some other things you can use as as materials to emboss um what about the the, the lid of your envelope the flap of your envelope lid <laughs> where did i come over with the word lid from now if you're wondering how we do that um what you do is you take your envelope and you take your whatever folder you're going to use and you flap the envelope over and in so that the envelope itself comes outside of the box and you whiz it through and hey presto you've got a really nice attractive little extra addition to your envelope and it makes it seem like it's a rather more expensive envelope than it actually is um, what about this doesn't work on all ribbons I have to say and I find it quite difficult but some ribbons really do emboss very well have a try what are you wasting a tiny little scrap of ribbon I'm sure you can uh, decide whether it works or not what I tend to do and I'm not sure whether this works or not but I think it does um, I tend to set it with a little bit of hairspray afterwards which kind of holds it in its place instead of because over time the ribbon relaxes and it lets go of the pattern um, but certainly it lasts this this I did I don't know a week or so ago just as a sample ready um, and it's still nicely marked so again an interesting way of using your texture across your materials too and I'm sure there are many of you who are very creative who are sitting there going oh I could try this oh I could try that and of course you can now you've just got to be careful whatever you're sending through that you don't damage your machine 
it's a very hale and hearty machine it's going to be hard to damage but again if you look in at the very end of this video i'll just give you some ways of cheating when you've got materials that aren't standard okay so think about your materials when you're embossing um, what about colouring inside your folders? So here's our folder. And I'm going to just show you, do a quick demonstration of this because it's quite hard to tell you. I'm going to try and create a brick wall. Okay, I've got my brick, some mortar. Okay, brick and mortar, three dimensional, um, which makes a very nice bricks and mortar in white. So I'm going to stick it through just to show you. So let's just bring in the machine. Oops, here we go. I'm going to put it sort of slightly off center and sideways. So you can see me getting it in, see me getting it out and see me turning the handle, hopefully. Okay, so because we are using a three dimensional uh, embossing folder, I first of all need platform number one and then I need number four. There you go, number four. So I put my bricks and mortar in and remember I'm putting it, those of you that watch the video and were paying attention will know that the hinge, so that's this piece where it's joined together, oops let me just shake that way up, so the hinge end wants to go in first. So there we go, put that in, let me just put a plate on and I'm going to wind it through and it shouldn't need you to uh, and pull hard, it should just punch, punch through relatively easily. So there is a white version. Now we're aiming to get a coloured version. Now you could now use your coloured crayons, you could use um, your watercolour pencils. We have a fabulous selection of watercolour pencils that you could use to make that into a lovely brick wall. You could use all kinds of things, inks on top. But here's a really quick and amazing way to do it. So let me just take the machine out of the way for a second. I'm sorry, you're going to have to put up with a few clinks and clunks as I'm shunting the machine about. Um, right, so here we've got a plain piece of paper. So let's just put that ready. I'm going to take... Oh, I'm going to try a different colour set. I was just thinking I haven't used the same colours here. Right, I've got... Who, what have I got? I've got crumb cake. I've got Sahara sand. And... I've got a couple of ready sort of bricky colours. So I've got Calypso Coral and Cajun Craze because I thought we tried a slightly different version of colours. So I'm just opening all those and sticking them down the side. And all I'm going to do is just put a little bit onto a block of each. Now, if you're a kind of girl that's quite happy to use your... Um, your actual pads then you can it's up to you I like to use when I'm doing special effects I like to use if possible um, a pad to put them on so where's my crumb cake there we go so I've now got crumb cake Cajun craze and calypso coral and in this hand I've got the Sahara sand and I'm going to use the Sahara sand because it's the palest of the colors first now, I want to just with my finger check which is the innie and which is the outy side. This is the outside, this is the one that's sticking up. So this is the side I'm gonna work on. So I'm just going to, I'm going to use that all the way across, which gives me like a sort of, sort of good overall color. And then I'm going to take a little piece of our sponge and using the other colours, I'm just going to dit and dot the other colours around. Not too much of any of them, but just enough to give it a bit of a all-over feel. Okay, 
so let me just put my piece of card back in now once I put the piece of card in I don't want to be moving it around too much because otherwise it will smear so I'm just going to put it to one side before I close it so I can bring in my machine first okay so back comes the machine and then when I'm bringing the machine backwards and forwards I'm not going to um, knock it okay so I've got the base plate number one remember we're still using that three-dimensional um, embossing folder so in it goes here's where I close it okay so I close it and as soon as I closed it I put number four on top to hold it in place and I very slightly push it to get it started grab hold of the handle and I whiz it through another version of my brick wall so there you go I've now got a sort of ready version and a brownie version just to just to try okay please ignore the phone if you can hear it I don't know whether it comes over on the on the film but it's going off in the background from in my husband's office because he's not here this morning and I thought oh I can get this done without any interruption so <laughs> there you go serves me right doesn't it so let's continue so we can always use colour inside our embossing folders and of course you can do that with any of the other patterns you can sponge you can press you can brayer you can add colour in any way you like all of these folders are simply plastic so they're quite happy with a little tiny bit of washing up liquid or a little piece of shampoo tiniest weeniest bit of shampoo something like that or even just pure and simply your chamois to clean it up but do make sure it's totally clean i tend to run a piece of newspaper or a piece of old envelope or a piece of old copy paper just through to double check that I've got that nice and clean but look there's my chamois and it's brought it up beautifully remember it's only dye so it's nice and clean okay the other thing I would suggest is that you also just once you've done that if it is at all damp don't close it and then put it back into a plastic bag or it's it's folder just leave it out to air dry a little for just a couple of minutes or so because um, it can go sort of a bit sweaty and horrible inside okay next thing I want to show you is now we've looked at the idea of actually um, using ink inside how about making a really pretty little card so here we go this time I've got this lovely woodland tree um, Hang on, let me get my trouble is I've got too much stuff and I haven't got quite a big enough surface to show you, but it's all got to get under the camera. How how's that? Right, I've got the woodland um embossing folder, which is fabulous. I love it for Christmas. It's a it's a must. For other times of the year it's great too. Um it gives a lovely sort of background of, of trees and it's nice if you put things over the front of it or you just use it as with a, a small greeting it's great even on its own but how to make it even more fabulous right this time I want to look at the inny side not the outy side so I'm looking at where the trees are indented so that these areas are really nice and flat but sticking up okay this side if I run my finger through it I can feel the trees this side the trees are actually downwards okay so it's this side I want to use and I'm looking to at this little branch here okay because look he fits just so beautifully under this branch and I've got soft suede because I love soft suede for the color of a deer I think it's just the perfect color and I'm just going to ink up my um, deer the way I would for any other type of stamping Okay, and I'm going to pop him just underneath that branch. 
and I'm just going to hold it down carefully just to make sure it really is in place. And I have to take it up quite carefully because it can slip and slide so you just have to take it up quite carefully. Um, I've not tried this on the Stamparatus but you might be able to do that on the Stamparatus. Somebody will have to have a go at that and tell me if it works. I've just had a brainwave that that might stop it sliding. Okay, and like the other, I'm going to pop this in in a moment, but again, I'm going to bring the machine in first because I don't want it to slip and slide once it's closed. So in comes my embossing machine. Plate one. Um, now this time, this is not a three-dimensional one. This is a thinner, in fact, you can tell because it's quite thin. Um, if I compare it, I've, I've lost where I put the other one. Where's the brick gone? Anyway, never mind. I think I've just popped it, popped it to one side and I've goodness knows where. I've got so many things around me here and if I start moving piles, we may never, you may never find me again. I might be still hidden. Um, but this is a much thinner um, folder. So again, we do the same, we put the hinge in first, but this not being a three dimension needs plate one and this time it needs the two clear plates. So we put one down. These are the clear cutting plates, so they're the number threes. And we put one down, then we put this down, but first of all we've got to put our piece of paper in. It's actually um, white, whisper white cardstock. There we go. Put the second plate on top, and in he goes. There we go. And out from underneath that comes this <coughs> oops this lovely image of the deer and because we've got the embossing folder and because we stamped onto it the stamp only took on the flat surfaces that were raised but now of course they're sunken and he is now peeping out from be be behind that tree and if i was just to nicely slice that along the bottom so that we've got him standing nice and square he would be fabulous and i could then make him into the simplest of cards like this just a very simple card here he is just peeping out from behind the tree with a merry christmas and a little bow or i could make him into quite a complicated card <coughs> oh my goodness sorry about that i have been coughing all the way through my a to z's i do hope this is going to stop <laughs> soon okay so that's another thing to try try stamping inside your folders you can stamp all kinds of things you can stamp um balloons onto maybe um the dotty one if we did balloons on the dotty one you would actually get dotty balloons um but you'd get colour and you'd get all sorts of things. So here we go. Don't forget to try that one as a, a little um, idea. Oh, I'm blithering a bit today. Right, now last but not least of the ideas to try for um, pattern is I just want to, to talk a little bit about designing with embossing folders. I absolutely love using embossing folders as the main feature. Now, something like this, although you think of this as your main feature, your cutout, your die cut, but actually it's the fact that you've got all these lovely textures that make this work. If those textures weren't there, and I'm going to bring it really tight up to the camera, there you are. Um, if those textures weren't there, that would be a very flat, very boring card, actually. And so it's the textures that are created by the layers of different embossed surfaces. And what about this? This is where we just go embossed and almost nothing else. All I've got is a plain white. I've then got the subtle, which is that lovely subtle, which gives you that 
brilliant design. I would suggest to anybody that if you want to buy a one folder, that's the folder to buy, the subtle. It kind of is a nothing thing, but it also is a very special thing because it just gives you that lovely texture. And then here we've got the tin tiles, which is a really strong, bulky, chunky, three-dimensional pattern. And we've used that really as the design element here. And the only thing I've added is a tiny little banner and a few little tiny sequins and dots. So do have a think about texture as, as a key element, as a key design element. Don't just always stick it in the background, always have it as a sort of the bridesmaid sometimes make it the bride make it to really zing out and useful now I would also suggest that when you are looking for your designs um, that you think about things that have patterns so I'm just going to grab two oops which I've put a little bit further out of my reach my little arms aren't long enough now these are ones from previous catalogues um, but I just wanted to show you sometimes because they're ones to look out for when they come back in and I'm sure that Stamping Up will, will make similar things again in the future so just something to look out for sometimes it's great to have just something which will emboss lettering so that again your lettering will just be a piece of the design so look out for ones which have lettering on and also look out for ones which actually have a design this one's a wreath this was a, a, little, a couple of seasons ago i think um, we've actually got some really lovely dandelions in the catalogue at the moment but sadly i don't actually happen to have them just right now um, so that's another one to look out for, ones that actually have the design already there for you. But don't forget, like the dots that we created the snow with, you can usually um, use some of the actual patterns to make your design elements. Now, the only thing I am concerned about with the new um, Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine is that because it's been calibrated so brilliantly and I cannot I cannot 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 tell you how brilliantly because it's been calibrated specifically to meet the stamping up other products it does mean that if you have a product that's maybe a little bit older you may even have bought it through our catalogue um, for example I have one here which is one of my absolute go-to embossing folders. Um, produced not too long ago, it, was, it creates corrugated paper. Absolutely stunning. I'm hoping they'll release something similar again. And I also have one that I love, which is a basket weave. Um, and this is the folder for that one. Now, these were both bought through Stamping Up, um, but they were when we were working with Sizzix and the Big Shot. So these are designed to go through the Big Shot. And the Big Shot and the Stampin' are just fractionally, and I do mean fractionally, millimetres different. And for most of the plates that I've put through, most of the old Sizzix plates that I've put through, most of the old plates from all kinds of other manufacturers seem to go through beautifully. But just every now and again, one of two of them will get a bit stuck or will not get stuck, but will cause you problems just trying to get them through. And the reason is this. I'll just show you this compared to... Where have I put it? Here we go. Right, here is one of our uh, stamping up new folders. And that's how wide they are. So I'll just bring that right up to the camera so you can see the width. There's the width, okay? Now here is one of the three dimensional, so these are both three dimensionals, and this is one of the Sizzix ones. Now if I show you, whether you can just see, but this Sizzix one here is just one millimetre wider, maybe. I don't know, but it's just very slightly wider. You can see 
it's just very slightly wider. Now that sometimes doesn't matter at all because the folder will just squish a bit, the plastic will squish a bit and it it will still go through beautifully. Um, but this particular one doesn't. It's actually, because it's lots of lines, it's quite rigid and it's quite um, solid. So it doesn't, it doesn't bend and, and, and mould very easily. So I got to the point where I thought, I don't know how to get this to go through. Well, I did know, but I might have got stuck if I hadn't had lots of experience of doing this. So here's the problem. As soon as I put this through with what should be the correct combination, it gets stuck. Okay, now I would like to say to you do not force things through okay if you are feeling like you're having to really push then it's not right it's not right you need to stop um, there is a very fine line between when you put the correct one through let me just find a correct one when you get to a certain point as it goes through Right, it goes through easy peasy, easy peasy, and then it gets to the point where it starts to meet the embossing folder. So the edge of the embossing folder is here. And I know that because the handle just starts to feel a little bit heavier. Now, if I hold on to this handle and I continue to turn, it should just go up and over the edge. And I should still feel now that whilst it's a little bit stiffer to turn, it's not difficult to turn. In fact, I can still do it with one finger, that one finger push. OK, now, if you are getting ooh, click and there's it going over the edge of the folder. Now, if when you get to that same point where the folder is just starting to go through so that the obviously the edge of the folder is in between those two rollers and this starts to become really stiff and difficult, then stop. OK, so a little bit of pressure is fine and a little bit of, oh, just ease it over. There it goes. OK, that's all you should be thinking. If you're thinking, oh, I've got to really push to get this through, then it's too tight and it's too hard and you're putting a lot of pressure on the rollers. So this is where you need to think. I need a different combination of things. And this is where I'm going to say to you, you can now go off piece a little bit. You can put any number of different plates together. You know, any of the one, two, three, four, six, seven. No, we don't have six and seven. We only have one, two, three, and four. But you can put any number and combination of them as long as the folder itself has a plate on top. And preferably, if you've got a choice, one of the stiff plates so preferably one of the clear plates or plate number four okay a number three or number four on the very top now if that means that you still can't get this to go through easily with just a little bit of pressure not force but pressure if that's the case then what you may have to do is get rid of plate number one now, plate number one is the great big thick base plate. So now we've got a problem because what we need to do now is make quite a big stack of other things to make nearly the height of that base plate. The base plate was too wide, so we're now going to have to make a combination of other things to make something a similar width, but not quite as wide. OK, and what I do for that is I use the various different base plates that we've got, threes and fours, and then I add some layers of card. And this is the card that um, often comes at the bottom of things like if you're ordering foil, this will come behind it. If you've got specialist papers, we have these. And I've also got a couple of pieces of just ordinary cardstock. And what I do is I just create a layer and a stack, a layer and a stack, a layer and a stack, until 
I get to a point where when I put this through and remember I have to put either a three or four on the very top to protect this as it goes through so I get to a point where I think ah oh, that's giving me a bit of pressure and I'm thinking no it isn't that's not giving me any pressure right so let's add another and all I'm going to add is just a couple of very thin pieces of cardstock and sometimes that's all I need just there we go now I can feel look there's a little bit see when I put it up it just bounces back there's a little bit of tension there that's all it is and that little bit of tension is what we need to squeeze that closed so what I'm saying to you is if you buy this machine which is fabulous and if you buy any of the stamping up embossing folders or you buy any of the three-dimensional stamping up embossing folders they will work you don't need to do all this messing about okay if you buy something that isn't stamping up please don't um, but if you've already bought something that isn't stamping up then mess about with all those different layers and that should work for you okay thanks very much bye bye